Can you do this on the table? This investigation is a good lesson in you never know what you're going to get on an investigation. Hi, my name is Mike Giovanelli. I'm the Director of Visitor Services at the Martinsburg Roundhouse. I'm going to give you a little tour. The Martinsburg Roundhouse was built in 1849. The first roundhouse on this very site. As a matter of fact, the inner circle is the turntable, the circle for the first turntable, which is 40 feet. The inner diameter is 40 feet. That was from the first roundhouse built in 1849. Then after the Civil War, this roundhouse was built along with four others. This roundhouse is 177 foot by 68 foot six. It's 16 bays. You could handle 16 locomotives in here at the same time working on them. Just think of roundhouses are a fast jiffy loop for steam locomotives. During the Civil War, Stonewall Jackson's orders in 1861 were to come in here and, and uh, rip up the tracks on both sides and destroy a lot of the property. So when he came in here, he told Garrett, the owner of the railroad, that the trains were keeping his men up. Can he halt the trains at night? Garrett agreed. In turn, he started ripping up the rails. He collected over 300 rolling stock cars and 30 locomotives on the site. In 1862, they came back, his orders were to uh, burn the whole place down. And that's what he did. Then by 1866, after the Civil War was over, 65, between 1865 and 1866, the bridge shop, two stories, this roundhouse and the fog shop, which was on this side, was all built in that year. The other roundhouse on this site was built in 1872, burnt down in 1990 by vandals. This is the artifact room. Very uh, active in here. At some points, it depends. It all depends on the night and who's, who's here. Oh. These are all mainly the artifacts. In 1987, I was getting my raw model fixed. I'm from New York, I'm from Brooklyn, born and raised in Brooklyn. I came out here because I love the history and my friends moved out here and I got involved here. This fellow over here is Jim Rigby. That's him. This guy, when I went to get my lawnmower fixed, that's Jim Nicely. He says, oh, I, I know that place. I worked there. Jim Rickard was his coach. Then another guy was here, Donnie Clemens. And that said, he was looking at the picture. I says, you know these guys? He says, yeah, that's me. So I want to get him in here. This guy used to work here. After he passed away, his daughter came back and gave me this write-up about him. That's him in the roundhouse before he passed. That's him when he was working here. All right, those are the cards he collected. So this is what I do for people, you know, if they worked here. This guy, Ed Hall, was a foreman. He's still here. He's still alive. This guy was in Pennsylvania and he worked on a Lackawanna for 30 years. They took his picture and put him in there. So this, this picture here is the roundhouse. This is the 1849 roundhouse that Stonewall Jackson burned down. These are called the coal cars. Back then they were called pot haulers. They hauled pot uh, ash, pot ash and uh, coal. This is the other roundhouse here that was burned down. We'll see that outside, this one right here. This is the saw shop. Beware, saw shop. Uh, this building is gone, that's out here. They stripped this building, let's go out. So real quick, why should we beware of the, the saw, saw shop? shop well, uh, there's, a, there's a mean guy in there, that's what I hear. I'll tell you a little story. We are, uh, Harris, you're gonna, you're gonna be meeting Harris. This is before I knew anything. I still don't know anything, but. Harris says, uh, I met Harris, I was scare acting in the Apollo Theater. And uh, Harris had investigations over there. He has his own company, Mac. And he said, well, why don't we have an investigation in a roundhouse? I said, yeah, sure. Well, and I'm new, you know, I didn't know anything. I didn't know nothing. And I uh, come over here, and we start investigating. I stay in the orchids. I took 
took him around like I'm taking you guys around. And uh, I found him uh, to be where they stand at or holes here, or holes there. And a uh, few little women came late at 12 o'clock. Keep this door open. Get a little air. Two women came late. So, uh, another girl, Angel, she's a witch, a good friend of ours. And uh, she was over in this area here. And uh, she came to, come to the office. Now, these two girls are investigating the roundhouse. She's, one's a medium, one's a sensitive. And uh, when Angel came back in, because I was taking them here next, they asked Angel, Angel, anything going on out there? She, oh, yeah. She puts up her shirt. Got scratched over here in the store shop. I said, oh boy, here we go. And uh, two girls came in. Okay, you ready? Blah blah blah. They took a break and we came out. And we went over here and she's in this roundhouse with the uh, rods. Dowsing rods. Right, going back and forth saying, oh, there's a lot of energy here, a lot of energy. So she's right here, as a matter of fact, walking back and forth inside the next round. And when they were done here for about 10 minutes over here, I knew something was going on in that saw shop over there. I said, well, come on, let's walk, you know, let's walk on the other side. And I'm trying to steer them away from that saw shop because I didn't want to go in there. Sure enough, they made a beeline right for the saw shop. She goes in, the other girl goes in, and I'm standing by the door. As soon as she went in, she turns around, looked at me, and she goes, we got to get out of here. We got to get out of here right now. You don't have to tell me twice. Bing, we're out of there. I said, well, what happened? She says, inside, there's a mean guy in there. He's still working. You don't want anybody in there. You were in his way. And he was all around me. That's how she goes, all around me like this. He was all around me. Because other mediums tell me that they get mad at me if I don't announce. Like tonight, I didn't announce anybody. So hopefully it's a good night. That's the Berkeley Hotel over there. Very scary. That hotel, the, uh, the um, West Virginia, State deputy has an office in here. When he first came here, him and his uh, his uh, secretary Ed Shull came over. They wanted a tour, so I gave him a tour. And as I'm giving him the tour, I'm telling him about stuff that goes on. And Ed goes, Ah, yeah, I don't believe that. It's all right, you know. I stop touching on it. Two weeks later, I say, Ed, Mike, come here. What's up? He says, I believe now. <laughs> what do you mean? What happened? He's got an office in there. He opened his door, and there's a stairway going upstairs. He says, I opened the door, and I looked, and there's a tall man with a beard and a hat, a long black coat, and he's just staring there looking at me. And he just disappeared. He says, I, I got to believe. I saw it. If I didn't see it, I wouldn't believe it. I saw it. Right. So there goes a non-believer. Now he's a believer. Just like me. <laughs> I didn't believe either. I love when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> so is there anything that investigators tend to do or really anything anyone does that seems to set the spirits off not in a negative way but kind of gets them going what sets the spirits off is me talking about stuff that happens here what sets this another thing that sets the spirits off is people with power we had a power con here mm -hmm. and the mediums were barely affected the mediums all the people that had power matter of fact I got a couple of pictures I could show you I'm in the artifact room during the power con, talking with a medium. Uh, I've got his name, really nice guy. And we're talking, I'm telling him what's happening with the with witch, with Angel, and this and that. And uh, all of a sudden, he starts sweating profusely. I look, I said, You all right? He says, Yeah, something's happening. He says, Look at my neck. I looked at his neck, and there was nothing there. And as I'm looking, I saw the scratches appear, three scratches appear, as I'm looking. And that's one of the things how I became a believer, because I actually saw it. So do they look like, you know, like human fingernail scratches or maybe like animalistic claw marks? Looks like three red marks. So this building is kind of active when it wants to be. A lot of times you get a lot of uh, voices in here. One guy says, can I go in the back? I want to go by, by myself. Go ahead, enjoy. He comes back with a voice saying, uh, he asked that, uh, do you work, did you work here? And it said yes, just like that, yes. The energy in people gives them their energy. And it also gets really active when it's thundering out. I don't stay here at night. I don't come here alone at night no more. Alone, no. Uh, one time I was here, a couple of times I was here, 
and I'm walking across the uh, closing up and I'm walking across that turntable I have BAM you know and I just kept going close up and get out of here so I don't walk up alone anymore and I try not to come here around this time anymore alone <laughs> I am cautious of it. Uh, What's the story with the cannon over here? Is that just you, Civil War? Do you remember the Patriot when he had all the soldiers on a hill and they were fake and he yeah. went over holding his soldiers? Mm -hmm. Same thing. They were in the Civil War, they put these cannons up on the hill so the enemy would think they're still there. That's the only thing. That's a wood cannon. That's, a, that's making it a mob. We did a lot of mob movies over here, a lot of movies. Now we're training the movie, now I bring it around in parades. This building is a frog shop. It's 200 feet by 100. The beams are 99, 11 uh, inches. The walls are 18 inch thick. The pilasters are 26 inches that the beams sit on, and there's no columns in here. Everything is pre hung from the ceiling with double hung beams. It's an amazing architectural feat in the beginning of the Re Industrial Revolution, um, uh, and there's no columns because the trains went through. Picture this place back in the day. It was very busy. The machine, every concrete pad you see, there was a machine on working. There was a crane here. There was tracks coming this way, this way. That's an elevator. This is an elevator for the carts. See that? That's an elevator. The cart would roll on. It would lift, turn, go out that door, that door. Trains would come through here. Very bad working conditions. Very busy area. Did anyone die in here due to those working conditions? Yes. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of deaths, maiming. Before the Civil War, you had child labor. There's a lot of children running around. You had, uh, Winesburg was taken over 20, 37 times by the Civil War. The Irish Brigade were whipping the horses up uh, um, the street over here. Can't think of the name. And uh, what happened was the, the horses, uh, the cart let go, and it was rolling back or sliding back, and it killed our brother. And before it got to the sister, the sister let out like an uncurling scream. And uh, then it killed a couple more kids as it rolled back on that road, Martin Street. Uh, in August, around this time, matter of fact, certain time of the year, around this time, uh, they hear that scream and they hear the Irish Brigade whipping the horses. They've seen, they've seen soldiers set up out here. They've seen children. They hear children running around in the fields over here. Also inside, so it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of residual energy. I mean, I feel it more and more, and I'm not a, anything yet, I don't think. This is the uh, blacksmith shop, the air operated drop hammer, five forges. Um, it's where they used to heat the steel in the forge. <clears throat> they had pulleys here, they would heat the steel, turn it around. Feed it into the air operated drop hammer and shape it. The roundhouse is 13 acres. That's over against the Tuscarora Creek. Our property goes way down past that tree. That's another field. In that field, during the Civil War, the soldiers, north and south, whoever had the place, used to set up in that field. This whole area is, is uh, Shepherdstown, Martinsburg. Um, you got the Adam Stevens house. Adam Stevens was the founder of Martinsburg. Adam Stevens in George Washington's day, 17 days or so. He built that Adam Stevens house over existing tunnels. There's existing limestone tunnels throughout Martinsburg, even under here. It was like an underground railroad. This rail right here is one of Jackson's raised rails that his men ripped up. It's got a pear shape on the end. That's one of the historic rails from 1866. That's the, that's the bridge shop. Lower part, they made parts to bridges. Upper part is very um, active. Uh, some nights you don't even want to go up there. <laughs> up there. What kind of activity are people reporting there? Uh, I one, during the Paracon, I had one lady over there went to open that door. She's not no. I'm sorry, don't go by the door. What do you mean? Somebody jumped off here, ran and jumped. Didn't make it to the other side, fell and died, and he's up there now, want to push everybody off. I never knew about that. I said, well, I never heard about that. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard it. Yeah, they're getting active. You hear a lot of stuff here, man, I'm telling you. That coffee fell off the... Really? Yeah. 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 Like, it was sitting up there fine. See, they're not liking it. See, I, I should have went around. I didn't want to go around because I wanted you guys to get something. Some nights it's not, and some nights it is, you know? 
because they get mad when you don't announce. Yeah. That's you and your sales building. Now back during the Civil War, before that building was built, um, that was used as a cemetery. And how we know that, that whole block was a cemetery. When they were building the building before that, they were finding soldiers' bones taking the foundation, and they were burying them. And uh, they repaved over the rest of the site. There was a lot of that in the Civil War days. Do you think they left any bodies under there? Yes, I'm sure of it. There's a lot of stuff. We we scare acted in that building. I was a zombie. It was called the zombie apocalypse. I was a zombie, and uh, that building. When you walk in, it was a a Ford garage, and it was like they just left like the apocalypse came and they just left because everything was still there the hammer was still there the jack was still there the the, the gojo in the sink was still there wow it was creepy man bell boyd house green roof not this building the next building bell boyd house bell boyd was a civil war spy she uh the soldiers came in and dissed her mother because her mother wouldn't take the rebel flag down uh and she uh came out and shot one of the soldiers in turn, her father had a shop there, another shop, a candy store, like a store. And uh, the father sent her down to Front Royal. And she went down to Front Royal and rode horseback, back and forth, getting information from the northern offices and bringing them back to Stonewall Jackson and his offices. He had a headquarters right there the, in the Berkeley Hotel. That was another one. That's so that building there was Stonewall Jackson's headquarters? That, well, when he took over the yeah. in the Civil War, he used huh. that as his head headquarters, the Berkeley Hotel. Yep. Before we began our investigation, we had one more interview to conduct. So we sat down with Harris, who told us a little bit about some of the paranormal claims of all three buildings. Uh, there's a lot of residual energy on the grounds. So I got to sleep in the roundhouse all by myself. Mm -hmm. I'm a sound sleeper. Nothing wakes me up. Right. <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning, I get woke up. I see shadows going across the turntable. I can hear voices talking. It's like they're working. Yeah. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. We've got a hobo mm -hmm. in the boxcar. We've got a spirit that hangs around the caboose. There's a couple of them. Yeah. Mike and I both seen the light moving on the second floor of the roundhouse one night. Oh wow. Did it look like a torch light, a flashlight, a lantern, anything like that? Almost looked like an old Coleman lantern. Huh. That's kind of cool. There's a lady upstairs there, and there's a guy up there. Mm-hmm. There's also, we think, there's a prostitute up there. I can find her, Caitlin. All right. I'll get the guy, get the girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I two of my members, a young guy, no part. They were up there, and it was, uh, he said, knock once if you want me, knock twice if you want the young stud. <laughs> <laughs> right on command. Right. And he says, Hmm, no, not once if you want the young stud, not twice if you want me. <laughs> <laughs> so they were telling us about a spirit here named Ernest. A spirit named Ernest. Yeah. What can you tell me about that spirit? You talk to Jane. Mm hmm She's the one who's seen him and recognized his picture. Okay. In the artifacts room. The artifacts room tends to be very, very active. In fact, we, we've had one psychic that's been attacked twice there. Are you talking about like scratches or, you know, anything like that? the stomach. Ooh. And then they came in here and a gal who does Reiki tried to pull it off her. Right. We watched. She felt a pain in her back. She had one scratch across her back. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the group that was here had the movie camera on her back. Yeah. And we watched three more scratches appear. 
I'm wondering if there's something in there that's trying to protect something of its or that is precious to it. That's what and I'm thinking. It's, it's scared someone's going to mess with it, so it's getting handy. Now, we had a guy in here for uh, Jackson Grade stopped in and talked to me briefly. And Amtrak, for some odd reason, couldn't get down to the station. And this is probably five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, they let everybody off the side of the creek and they had to walk up here. Right. He says they got in the field behind the fence there, the other side of the uh, fence. Mm -hmm. They witnessed a Union artillery unit pulling out. And as they started coming up, they all grabbed their guns and started shooting. Oh, wow. And they all saw this? Three people saw it that we know of. Did they hear any sounds, see muzzle flash or then anything like that? Muzzle flash. Jesus. And they saw all of... Wow. That takes a lot of energy to do. Uh -huh. So it's going to have to be that running water. And, and also the, the limestone and the train, yeah. All those, those are three perfect conductors, no pun Con intended. Confederate soldiers mm -hmm. have been seen here as well as Union, mm -hmm. which is not surprising being this changed hands so many times during the Civil War. Right. Mm -hmm. And Jackson burned it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He looted it the first time, and the second time he burned it. There's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of residual energy here, and I don't think there's an area in either of the buildings here that we have not captured an EVP. We're beginning our investigation of the roundhouse. We're starting in the roundhouse. What we're gonna do first, Caitlin, since you're an empath, what do you feel about the location so far? Well, when we first came here, it was kind of heavy in certain areas, but not in the area that we are currently in. But since it has gotten darker and we have seen shadow figures outside of the building and now we are seeing them inside of the building, it has gotten very heavy. I honestly feel like I'm being suffocated because of how heavy the energy is. Do you smell that? Yep. Did you hear that? I can't pick up anything on this. It's too freaking dark. So the roundhouse here is a bit more active than I figured it would be. What do we do? Do not jump down there. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty far. Did you hear that? Yep. Yeah. It's like someone's down there walking. Let's go see it. Who's down there? We can hear you walking. We've also been seeing shadows. This is the same area where we were hearing it when we were interviewing Mike. Yep. We can hear someone walking and like something like a pebble dropping or tools dropping. I think it's behind us. It is. Stop. Right there. I saw a light. Oh, I'm looking behind us. No, I saw a light. Hold on. Turn your flashlight to the side. Out the window, left of the door, I saw a yellow looking light. It almost looks like a flashlight or something, you know, Could similar. Be a car? Where? There's no road back there. Um, right here, there's no the road. Guy just went by I know, but this was here. This is facing that uh, other building. Well, it could have reflected off the windows. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> it could have been, but the car was also moving. This is stationary because I was watching it for a little while. Yeah, it was about right here, which is inside that building. Right now, you're acting more alive than dead. So if you could talk to us, we'd really appreciate it. Did you hear that? That was outside. I wonder if that was that maybe... Was beeping is what it sounded like. Some kind of machinery beeping. I was wondering if it was that or maybe whistling. It could have been an animal though. I hope it's not an animal. Well, what animal would have made that noise? What animal could get in here? Because everything's blocked off. Except for we didn't have the doors open for like an hour. Right. Did you hear that? Because that echoed. I saw movement. I did right too. There. I'm looking right at it. Whoever you are over there, can you please make a sound? How about this? If you are here with us, can you knock for us one time? Make a noise. 
I know it's really hard to see on the camera. It's pretty much all yeah. blackness, but we are seeing shadow figures with our, you know, head on, not side vision. I heard footsteps. I did too. They're, they're leading us towards the artifact room. Yep. Oh, I thought that was falling in. <laughs> <laughs> all right, since you want us back there so bad, we're on our way. Wrong way, is it? Yeah, yes. it's wrong way. But I keep seeing something in this. Caboose? Yep. I'm just gonna stop walking places. I keep seeing something like not like and on top of it earlier. I see something like on top of it. I don't know, I could just be going crazy. One of the two. Alright, let's hold up real quick. If someone is in the artifact room, can they please make a noise? Recording. What? It stopped recording. What stopped recording? Does it have like a time limit? No, nope. it's an iPhone. iPhones don't. That's a little creepy. I Did you hearing. stop my videos from recording? Do you not want us in the artifact room? That's a machine outside. No, it's actually back here. Oh, that's kind of cool. Is there something in here you don't want us to touch or even look at? So, as we were talking about, this is the artifact room. This is where they keep, well, the artifacts, obviously. I heard Ernest is here. Sure, he's I'm do some weightlifting. <laughs> All right, Ernest. I just got a whiff of something. Like one? It's like a smoky smell. I smell something sweet. It's weird how that feeling of, you know, that tightness in your chest, it just, it's here and then it's gone. Here and gone. Yeah, like it's coming and going. <laughs> He's touching everything. Yeah, tissue. You don't know how all this stuff's been here. Although I might require a tetanus shot after this. Probably. Well, if they ever wonder if that light works, yep, it works. Just not well. <laughs> Actually, it sounded like it's about to blow. There's something behind me. Hello? heck was that? You know what that sounded like? A growl. Yeah. That sounded like a growl. Are you it growling like it came, us? Caitlin, it came from behind us. I know. That would make you run. Now I'm like trying to go towards it and you're trying to go away from it. No, I'm going to. I heard it back here. I heard, I heard it, it in there. I heard it over I my it shoulder. I heard it over my shoulder. I thought it was behind me. That's why I was like, did you hear that behind me? And you're like, what? I saw movement. Anyways, like, I was like, do you hear that behind me? I turned around. And then as soon as I turned around, he paused for a moment, it, it growled. That's why I was like, oh my gosh, like something just growled behind me. You know, in the daytime, that old train was really cool, but at night, it's not so cool. It's actually kind of creepy. I don't know. It was like something like on old cartoons. Yeah. All right, anyone that's in here, my name's Jake. This is Caitlin. We want to. I want to know who is in here who doesn't want to knock on something for us but decides to growl at us. Did you hear that? Yep. It sounded like somebody hit the roof. It could have been setting if you heard it on the roof. I heard it, but I don't know which direction it came from. It sounded like it is the roof. Well, whoever growled, can you do that again? I do too. Yeah, that's that's too obvious.
what we do have to keep in mind there are animals there's we saw a deer there's groundhogs watch that nope nothing of course but you heard that too yeah it, it was footsteps like it was coming like behind us or like it was walking out of the building. Well, have you noticed that most of the stuff we're experiencing, it seems like it's in front of us, gets us to go towards somewhere, and then it's behind us. Yeah, like it's leading us somewhere or something. Yeah. All right, so let's check this area out. Then we'll go back into the roundhouse and let's okay. get, or before you start the spirit box, you want to go walk around the other building? Yeah, we could do that. Okay. It don't matter. The energy is different here. I smell that too. That something's burning. Could it be from? Roundhouse burned. Yep. Residual. And they said the uh, salt shop over here was oh, the one. Oh. What was that? What? Like as soon as you turn the light off, it's like a blue light like appeared like right there and then disappeared. Now turn it off. Nope. Huh, which window was I pointing at? That window? Nope. Nope, nothing. The that one, like the far yeah. far one. Okay. All right. That was strange. Nope. It's not doing it now. Right as soon as I brought up the salt shop. Yep. Okay, the salt shop, they were telling us you know be careful going in one because it's dangerous and then two apparently there's a spirit that's not all too happy so naturally that's where we're gonna go i'm not feeling it out here the same as the other areas it's not as heavy out here but i am getting i think i think what i think what we're picking up is purely residual out here that's my guess because the smell of smoke you know that could be from civil war that could be from when the round, uh, roundhouse burn yeah, the, also you have to think about it too it's old wood so therefore like so much wood so therefore like the smoke smell could be sunken into that wood that's the true pores of it and we could be smelling it too that's true i don't get a good feeling from this i need a brighter light on this thing this is ridiculous what are I you see nothing what are you feeling from this building right now from this building this one right here i feel something kind of not evil it's, but it's not it's kind of pissed i feel something kind of pissed it, to me it don't feel negative it feels territorial like as if don't touch my stuff don't go in my building you know like i own this this is where i am this is where i'm going to be this is where i want to stay now this building right here has a different smell compared to the rest of them and i don't understand why and i don't know why probably due to the equipment i don't know just look at this old writing on up here. Oh, orbs came straight at the camera and scared me. <laughs> I was not ready for it. I wasn't ready. She Try wasn't. Yourself again, I'm sorry. You didn't actually scare me. I just wasn't prepared. Bull crap, you were scared. When I, looked at, when I looked down, it was already there in my face. Did you hear that? I heard something. Like, I thought I saw something. Like, a, like something beat something. Like a bang. Sword. If anyone's back here, can you please say hello? How do you feel about Jake going in your little hiding hole back here? Your little workshop. What was that? Okay, what was that? It's like a scream, sort of. That was, that was female back behind the building. Can I see? Nope. Eh, nope, cannot. Who did we just hear? Was that a woman screaming? you know what that was about? Can you make... Whoa. What? There's somebody in there. What do you mean? Like actual person or? No, like as, as in that's in a shadow. Like no, stop. Right there in the corner. I yep. saw someone. Yep. All right, someone's hanging out back here. I seen you in here as soon as I was walking through. Where'd you go? You want me to turn my light off? Point to the side. I want to see you. I'm here to communicate with you. Can I have that honor? Did you hear that? That's back in that direction. Are you behind us? No, you're in front of us. I heard that. Do you hear that voice? Yep, like humming, like someone's humming. Yeah. Are you humming? I 
keep thinking I'm hearing stuff all over the place. It's behind me. I wonder if there's a, I wonder if I it's... I can feel it. It's... I'm cold. I'm getting cold. It's behind me. Whoever's behind Kayla, make a sound right now. Heaven right beside of us. To the right. Yep. You have no reason to be scared of us. We mean no harm. It sounded like something hit the door, yep. like it was knocking, trying to get yep. in. We mean you no harm. I'm gonna tell you something, all right? I'm a very nice guy. There is no need to be fearful of us. And I hope you're a very nice spirit. I feel like you're a man. And he's right beside me. I just heard like a stomp. Do y'all get people up here often? Did you see that? It's a car light. Oh. That has to be a car light. <laughs> From behind that though? No, well there might be a road back there. Maybe, I don't know, I didn't check. Cause I'm not close up to it enough, but I will post pictures of it later. We went upstairs, and as we were going upstairs, we felt a very, very heavy presence. And it's not good, definitely not good. <laughs> but it's not evil, but it's like... It's unhappy, it doesn't want to be very bothered. It's unhappy that we were up there. And we'll have to go out very those... Very Was that a here coming there earlier? What? They were all connected. That wasn't there earlier. Did that fall? Where, where yeah. would that have fallen from? Exactly. Where? But that wasn't there earlier because I walked down this way. So, that would be the second thing tonight that's been Maybe. destroyed or thrown. Yeah. See, I don't really feel it here. I, it's mainly upstairs. Mm hmm. I wonder why the air is so different up there than what it is down here. The air probably doesn't. Whatever is upstairs, I don't think residual. Yeah, it's definitely not what it is down here. Yep. I'm wondering if also because all it has to be the air circulation. Yeah, that's why I think it's not residual. Yeah, it's because it has to be the air circulation upstairs. That has to be the reason why. Yeah. All right, so we're about to go into the sketchiest building, probably out of all three. And so right, this is going to be turned into a wedding venue. Very sketchy as well. If I ever have my wedding here, I want someone to shoot me. <laughs> that has to be air circulation because that's the only door that's open. That's the only way air can get in. I don't know if the wind is coming from that direction. All right, my name's Jake. This is Caitlin. We were here earlier with Mike. Ooh, and this place did not feel right at all. I'm a set. This, sorry, by, Child. <laughs> by this door over here. Don't let me forget. I won't. There's a hole there. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure I don't run into any holes. It's called being aware of your surroundings. That I am not good at. <laughs> Just saying. All right, so if anyone's here, we come here out of respect. <coughs> God. We come here out of respect. We want to communicate with any and all spirits that want to respectfully communicate with us. So with that being said, if anyone is up here, can you please make a sound so that we know you're here with us? See, that's why I don't like the little blueberries because they're so tiny. Did you hear that? I heard the dog, and I heard a female voice. Yep. I heard a voice too. Did you hear that? What? I thought that was you. No, that wasn't me. <laughs> that was not me, sir. Uh, the Boo Bear, K2, you can't really see the colors. It's a little dim. I need to get me a new one. Oh, did you hear that? What, do you not like the red light? That was pretty loud. 
That was hella loud. You're gonna need to take it down a few notches, actually. Okay, I'm getting like this really deep feeling in my stomach right now. I think we need to move closer that way. <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> There's two types of investigators, one that runs from it and the other one that runs towards it. <laughs> I don't typically run from it, but something is telling me something isn't right here. And it's pissing me off because usually I'm good at figuring this stuff out, but I can't figure this one out. This is a location that doesn't have a history of really, really negative stuff, yet the feeling that I'm getting right now is like really negative. Yep. That's not right. Back corner. Okay, you see, bottom left corner there, you see that diamond shape? Yeah. I saw the diamond shape blacked out completely. Yeah, there's something over there. It's just making noises. Okay. Uh. So, we'll move towards it. And if one of us becomes demon possessed, <laughs> that happens. No, we're not I know. Okay. That could be vibrations because we're moving. Try moving again. No, it's still moving. All right, yes. Yep, thought so. <sighs> Thank you. Can you turn the flashlight back on? See that? Nice. Thank you. All right, I have a spirit box with me in my hand. If you don't know what it is, I'm gonna go ahead and explain it to you. This is a radio, basically, that plays backwards 100 milliseconds, and you can get to it and use it to talk to us. It's not gonna hurt you. It's not gonna hurt us. It's fine. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. It will be a little loud. Xbox. Scanning. FM. Nope. Radio. Please help. Please help? Yep. Please help. What do you need help with? This is going to sound crazy. I thought it said all the wounded. Are there wounded soldiers here? Awesome. I really wish I had my speaker. Alright, we're using a different box. Same cast of characters. I had the Necrophonic app too. And it oh, works, yes. Yeah, it works really well. Huh. Is there anybody here with us tonight? Did say Gordon? Here? Caitlin, I hear it again. It's back here. Who's back here? Back here? I heard it back here. It, it went. I heard it. We heard that noise. It's running through. And I saw something. I heard something back here when I walked in. It's, I think it's residual. Stop. I heard a hiss. That was a loud hiss. Do you not want us around here? I saw something in that back corner. It might have been the machine. I heard something, thought I saw something, and then something hissed. Where you at? Why are you running from us? This is where it is. Feel the vibe? I do. It's heavy. It's very heavy in there. Where are you at? I want to talk to you. Why are you running from us? Why? There's no reason to be running. You know, as soon as I picked up my phone and you were talking about this back there, mm -hmm. the K2 went to red and the flashlight turned completely on. Holy crap. Yep. And it can only turn right usually if something's yep. like right up on it. Flash. Flash? That was like a muzzle flash. Why are you playing games? 
Let's see if it rocks the train. Can you play games? Ow, watch that spot. I'm not here to play games with you. I will run around this whole building. I will run around this whole building. That sounded up there. Up there. Like, that might be the building. Stop. Let's see if we can hear something. Oh. Did you see something? Oh, yeah. What? Something was walking beside. I stopped and I heard the gravel shake and it was like right behind <laughs> me. And I was like, oh, my bad. It's walking in sync. I stopped this all of a sudden. It's in sync with us. It's picking on us. It's mocking us. Shh. I heard a moan. I did too. My stomach's like, I have like a cannonball feeling in my stomach. Like, you like, know, like when you're nervous and you're all trembly? Yeah. Me. That's me. I feel like I have butterflies in my arms. I just feel like the sinking feeling in my gut, and it's not a good feeling. I've had this before. I feel like I'm being watched. I'm scared of I'm not scared of the or anything. Stop. Did you hear it? Yep, back there. Again. No, I heard it over here, like... That's back there. That is... Can you do this on the table? Okay, so here's the plan. We keep having stuff go from the roundhouse in front of the artifacts room into this room, the machine room. You can't really see because the camera's exposure isn't very good. So Caitlin is by herself in the artifacts room and I'm back here in the machine room. Ah, geez. Are you kidding me? Something just ran up on me. Okay. <laughs> That's trippy. What? Do what? No, I don't, but here, come here. I was setting up the spirit box, recording, thank God. Something like ran up on me and I looked up and there was like this, it was almost like a mist. Okay. And I'm like, why is our kids here? And it goes, why do you ask? Like, rude. So why are you getting all the cool <laughs> spirits? I just got freaking bum rushed. <laughs> Stop. Did you hear kids? I heard a kid's voice. It's coming through the ghost app. The necrophonic app. I'm telling you, there. Um... What did you see? A mist. Okay, so I'm going to kind of title this documentary Spirits vs. Jake because it's kind of what this crap is turning into. I don't know what I did to piss these spirits off. Do, do not like me. So, sucks to be you. Are you kidding me? Did you? <laughs> this is. Okay. I don't know what's going on at this point. <sighs> this is close to the point where you just, you know, tap out. You just tap out. That's me. Yeah, I used to the case is on. Yep. Okay, so attempt number two, I now have a walkie talkie. All right, spirits, we're trying this one again. Round two.
hello, is there anyone here with me tonight? My name's Jake. Hey, Jake. Hey, that's, how are you doing tonight? Hi, bro. Say again. Hey, did you say something? What? Hey, did you say something? Yeah, I did. Hear me? I heard you say something, but I looked at the walkie-talkie and it was turned off. What did you say? There is a man growling at me through the necrophonic app. Are you kidding me? Does it sound like the growl we heard earlier? It's a little bit lower, and as soon as I said that, the flashlight turned on, and now it's on red. The K2 is. Well, it sounds like you're having better luck than I have. I got a voice that said yes to when I asked if it liked me or not. Actually, if it didn't like me. And then I had a voice say, hey, Jake, but that's literally all I've gotten. I'm mostly getting a kid and a woman, and she's, like, responding to a man that's talking, which I'm pretty sure it's the man that's been growling at us. Well, I asked for Ernest, and they said gone, so Ernest might be chilling with you. Dude, I just heard water on your side of the fucking, like, walkie-talkie. Like, you sounded like you are drowning in water. Hold up, hold up, I just saw something really screwed up by the door here. I, I don't think we're dealing with something human. You know, I've been feeling that since we went up there in the wood room. Actually, this done, I think it's encircling us, because I just saw it over at this other door. It, it looks a little strange. Me. Hmm. I'm gonna head back. Something doesn't feel right. Yeah, the K2 and the mag light are going off like crazy. Hey, was that you moving? Hey to me. I heard something outside, like at the old roundhouse. I heard something moving, like loud. Oh my gosh, the necrophone of gap told you to go. This is gonna sound crazy, but looking out the door, I saw something hooded. I saw a hooded figure. Honestly, that wouldn't surprise me. All right, that's it. Game's over. Who are you? Where are you at? Identify yourself. All right, this is getting ridiculous. What is messing with my leg? All right, that's it. That's it. I'm gonna move this stuff. Can you cl can you close that door? Did it say yes? Yeah. All right, go ahead and do that for us. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the building over here. We've had a lot of crazy stuff happen. Uh, we actually just split up for a little bit. And we want to see how that would work, and it worked a little too well. <laughs> Kaylin, what were some of the things you experienced? Um, well, at first, whenever he walked off, I heard a big bang, as if he ran into the door or something. But then I started hearing him talk, and he sounded like he was behind me, way on the other end. So I asked who was in the room with me, and a girl said, Megan. And I was like, how old are you, Megan? And she said, 27. And then after that, 
a little girl spoke and I asked her if she was a little girl who got ran over by that part of that train or whatever the, it was. The uh, cart. The cart, yeah. And um, she said yes and I asked her how old she was and she said nine. And oh, then the she started giggling and then they said Jesus and I was like, do y'all believe in Jesus? And there were some yeses and some noes. And then I asked them, I was like, so what's my name? And they said Virginia. And of course, I'm from Virginia, so I thought that was pretty neat for the experience. Um, I had a few growls come in, a few get outs. That was mainly about it, but I heard someone walk in through the door and then like they stood beside me because my K2 was going off as soon as I heard that. That so, really looks really sketchy. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? So while Kayla was having fun with all of that stuff, I went into the back machine room. Within about a minute of being there, I heard something run up on me. That like flew over my head. Had something run up on me. I looked up and there was a mist, like maybe five feet, five or six feet away from me. That I ran out of the room real quick, came back in, started spirit boxing. I started seeing these figures moving around, and I should probably see them better. And at one point something caught my eye on the far left and it looked like a figure wearing like a cloak it had the hood on kind of hunched just a little bit it went by the door hesitated look it almost looked like it saw me and then it went you know to the side and a few seconds later i heard a loud bang on the door and then about like 10 seconds later caitlin actually called over the walkie talkie asking if i heard a bang or something and how loud was it for you, Kayla? It was really loud. Like yeah. it honestly thought, I thought he ran into something. Yeah, and I heard it directly in front of me. And then about three seconds later, I saw something at the other door, almost like it did a complete circle almost around every door. And you know, I'm sitting there, I'm trying to figure out what the heck this thing is. And I'm not asking questions. I'm sitting there, you know, talking to myself, trying to figure out what's going on. And this voice just says, demon. And then, you know, that's when it started getting a little, it almost felt like I was in danger. You know, it just, it didn't feel safe being there. And so I left, a whole bunch of other crap happened. So the moral of that story is don't split up on an investigation. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> don't listen to him. The best part is to split up because you get more experiences that way. Just make sure you're recording everything. And thank God we were. All right, we are back in the wood room area. In what? The wood room area, that's what they were calling it earlier. Because of the wood floors. Wow, you get that over here. <laughs> See, you can't get that little loop off there. I was wondering if you could get up there. And it looks like you can't. <laughs> Not that I would want to get up there. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna chill here in the center where we had our laser grid set up. The one that, you know. Died, died. in like five seconds. And we're just gonna do a spirit box session. Hey. Hey, how's everyone doing tonight? I'm Jake and I'm back with Caitlin. Who's still hanging out up here? Can you please say your name? Why aren't you really talking to us? We know you're up here. Yeah, this honestly, it, like I see shadows, but they're not really like... They're not communicating. Interacting. Well, it's almost like they're a little scared. Or, I don't know what word I would use to describe it. Alright, so we're gonna walk out of here. This is your last chance to say or do anything. We did hear someone hiss. Yeah. 
Typically we get impressed when things hiss at us, but nope. Yeah, yeah. Kind of old hat for us. All right, so we're back here in the really sketchy area. Last time I was here, something bum rushed me from that door. Saw a cloaked figure. Might have had an encounter with Ernest. Jury's still out on that. I heard a voice. Thank you. The back of my arm is burning. What? The back of my arm is burning. Yeah. It's itchy. Like, no, like, oh. not, like under my shirt. Oh. It's weird. Was that there before? With that cart? Yeah. Yes. Are you sure? Yes, 100%. Okay. <laughs> Just remember that was one. Stop. I saw it. I saw something pop up right there. Hold up. That wheel, it was back behind there. I saw something, when you shined your light over, it was there and it popped down real quick. Like a head? It looked like a kid, like a little kid. At what wheel? It was standing, hold on. It was right here. It was like this tall. You shined your light over real quick and then it went down. Like, it like it's hiding. No, like it was hiding. Almost yeah. like a kid would play hide and go seek. And I heard something in the caboose. I did too. Can we go in the caboose? Voices? No, That's them. No, I hear walking. Yep. It's back there. We hear you. Okay. Did you hear that? Yeah. That was like something scratching on the door. We heard scratching the door earlier too. Yeah. Was, what would scratch on the doors though? That's not a human thing to do. I know. Stop, stop, over there. Did you hear it? Is there a door? It's behind us. I'm trying to get in. Back over there. Right there. Was that you? There. It feels like there's something under the turntable. Stop. I'm, I'm hearing like something moving constantly. I am too, but it's like going from all different directions. You see, I'm here really now. I don't Are you kidding me? It's right yeah. under me, Caitlin. Uh -huh. That was like right over here. There should be nothing under there aside that could make noise on its own. Are you kidding me? This is stupid. This is stupid. Ah, frick. I about tripped and fell into the turntable. It's at the door. Yep. Why does it keep going to the door? It's going from door to door. Well, here's the issue. It's only got a few more doors to go before it gets... Whoever's at the door, can you scratch again? I'll let you in. Is that what you want? Us, but that could just be the wood. It could be. It's a lot of dust in here. If anyone is here, can you please make a sound? Oh. Was that you? Nope. 
I heard footsteps. I see something right now. Out that window, I see this one. All right. I see a figure. Oh, on the left side, you can in? Yep. Yep, 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 I mean, are they kidding? Are they kidding us? These spirits think we can't see them. I wonder. Is that you? Yeah, that was over there. What? No one. I heard a voice. I heard something moving. I didn't hear that. I heard something move over there. So while Caitlin's doing that, Jake's gonna go into the caboose. Are you getting a heavy feeling again? Um. All right, coming in the caboose. I've actually never been in a caboose before. This is gonna be kinda cool. Now, it's, it's not as cool because it's dark, but. All right, well, spirits, I'll give you credit. You were able to make some pretty cool noise for about 10 minutes. You okay? What? There's a figure just went in that back room, artifacts room. I mean, not artifacts, but back there. I heard it like legit run up behind me as I was like standing on the edge of that. I'd have probably pissed myself. I, I just told them, I was like, if those move with how creepy they are, oh, I'd probably done. shit myself and tell you guys on camera because that's how fucking creepy they are. Lord. What? I keep seeing stuff in the windows. I don't like the fact that it's doing non-human things. Like scratching and crap like that. I had something shuffle next to me by the old roundhouse. It was loads of fun. Did you hear that? Yep. Like a scream? Yeah. That's the third time tonight we've heard a female scream. I, I've been getting it through the hypocrisy. All right, spirits. This has been fun. We appreciate you communicating with us tonight. <clears throat> I don't know why I said that like an announcer. But on behalf of me and Caitlin, we hope to see y'all again soon. Can you make one more sound for us, please? Yep, thank you. I just want you to know that you are to stay here on this property and these buildings. You are not to follow us home for now or for any time in the future. Do you understand? Good. Once again, thank you all. Live long and prosper, and have a good night. All right, so we've concluded our investigation of the roundhouse and the surrounding buildings. We were tasked to go from building to building, locking up the doors, and somehow we haven't screwed it up yet. Caitlin, now that the investigation's wrapped up, what do you think? Um, the place at first I thought wasn't going to be as active as it was. Um, it was active for a good four hours, and then after the last hour or two, it really died off. Um, they claim that there's nothing negative here, but from my experience, there is, and I don't know what or who. We got the name of James earlier. That's up here in this last area that we're locking up. And we have seen his shadow multiple times. Other than that, this has been a very good investigation and I would not mind coming back.
it was very active with the shadows and spirit box would go off. We got a lot of knocking. There is a lot of residual activity. Yeah, pretty much my sentiments echo Caitlin's. Um, I, have, I said it earlier, I also said it when I did a Facebook live stream, I seriously underestimated this place. Oh yeah, for sure. Because we showed up and we're like, there's not that many deaths here, you know, like... Well, it's also interesting because a lot of the information that our guides were telling us didn't match up the stuff that's online, but they had historical backing yeah historical proof for their story so it you know kind of reiterates that you can't always believe what you read on the internet and in this case you know it hurt us a little bit on our investigation because for that first little bit we were caught off guard and maybe the investigation wasn't at its peak potential simply because of that but i would say we recovered quite well oh yeah definitely the spirits kind of pissed me off there for a while not gonna lie <laughs> and that last little bit where we had something clawing at these doors here, that was creepy. So yeah, from the roundhouse one last time. This was a great investigation. Highly recommend it. Jake out. There's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of residual energy here, and I don't think there's an area in either of the buildings here that we have not captured an EVP. Hmm.